Get my Yuri on Ice shirt. Is this not the best shirt you've ever seen? Oh, I'm leaving that in. Hello everybody, Maddie here, and today I'm bringing you a video that's not quite drawing, but it's based on art still. I'm going to be talking about the drawing books I have and which drawing books I recommend. I don't actually have that many drawing books, but I have quite a few, and a lot of them I just look for inspiration in. And so yeah, I thought that'd be a fun video to do, and I also just recently got two new books, so I'm very excited to read them, and I thought I'd show them today. First up is, <laughs> not books, hashtag clickbait, but I still take art inspiration from them. I get Game Informer magazines because I like video games, and yeah, I really like looking at the art in these and also reading about video games, but I actually mostly look at them for the art. And they give me lots of inspiration, I think they're nice to look at, especially if you really like video games and you're like me and you want to do video game art for a living, then these are really nice. These next few books are by the same person, but I have Mastery Manga with Mark Crilly. I got this a long time ago, like way back when it first came out. I remember being super excited. And my favorite part about these books and why I like them so much is the reference pages that he has, like 50 ways to draw hands. This page layout saved my life. I love this page layout. Also, he has 50 ways to draw feet in here, like just really good useful stuff that I think is really good, especially if you're a artist just starting out on your own, you know, kind of self-taught. This is what I looked at a lot of time when I needed some help with some things, especially hands and feet. Oh my goodness in the back here, stuff about like perspective and how to do stuff in perspective. I'm taking a class right now in college called Design Drawing where it's all about two-point perspective and honestly the class is very difficult but if you are having trouble with doing backgrounds and stuff like that, that's what this also is nice for. And you know, I just got like lots of illustrations, lots of stuff about proportions, really fun stuff. I know he has Mastery Manga 2 and 3 also, and I don't have those, unfortunately. And I don't know if I'm going to purchase them. I'm not sure yet. I have a, enough books, I think, for drawing reference of the figure. Next one, again, Mark Crilly, The Realism Challenge. This one, I honestly like looking at the pictures in it. <laughs> uh, I don't do a whole lot of realism. I do now that I'm in college, I have to do realism for a few of my classes, which is different for me. I haven't done a whole lot of it beforehand, besides just like some still lives, and I did draw like my friends before and stuff like that. Usually when I draw people though, I like put them in a cartoon style, <laughs> so yeah, realism is was really hard for me to get the hang of, and at first I didn't like it. I was like, why do I gotta do realism? Blah. But realism is actually very, very important, even if you just do cartoon art, because I think you need to know the rules in order to break the rules, if that makes sense. If you want to do cartoon art, yeah, that's great, do cartoon art, but know what it looks like in real life and how it works in real life in order to adequately draw it still in a cartoonish style. Step by step, how he turns stuff and makes it realistic. And this is really helpful, I like mostly the stuff on coloring because I like to color a lot. But honestly, even if you're really good at coloring, if your base drawing or sketch isn't that good, then it's not gonna look quite right. I have a problem with that. I'm not that good at sketching or drawing, but coloring and shading, I'm like, yeah, I got this, Psh, easy. It's the proportions and how to set stuff up that really gets me. So I look for books that have those tips. These next few books I threw in, they're not really drawing references, but they're art related, and I got them for school, but I wanna talk about them. And they're my art history books. <laughs> I had to get four art history books, all from like different time periods. And the reason why I think it's important to learn art history when you're an artist 
is because you can get inspired by some really old artwork or like look at the old masters and see how they did stuff. Not even just like Renaissance like everyone thinks, Leonardo da Vinci and everything, but we're talking way back in the day, you know? I think it's important to actually learn about. And I know you guys may be thinking, oh, boring. <laughs> But I do think it's nice to look into, and I'm actually considering starting a series that's like Artists of the Day or like Art History 101 or something like that because I actually really like art history and I think it's really interesting and I would love to talk to you guys about it. By the way, if you're wondering about the state of my hair, I'm letting it grow out for a little bit and then I'm going to cut it again, but right now it's a mess. This next book is another book that I got for school. Perspective hand Drawing Handbook. I got this for my design drawing class. I'm gonna be completely honest, I didn't open it too much, but everything we learned in class is in this book. So if you wanna do like landscapes with buildings and stuff like that, and you're like, hmm, how do I make stuff like recede into the background? And how do I actually make it so stuff has straight lines? Well, then I highly recommend some type of perspective book. Something that can really help you with just like the building blocks of a landscape drawing. Or just design drawing in general. I feel like it would be very helpful to know all this stuff. There's lots of drawing tips in here that you can use in other things. We mainly draw shapes. However, when we were learning how to draw organic shapes going and receding into the background, I took that and I applied it to my figure drawing where if I had like a leg that needed to be foreshortened or something because a person was sitting down, I would know how to draw like internal ovals and stuff like that. Like I would learn from like this book and that class that went along with this book. This one is one of my favorites. Fantasy Workshop, Imagine FX. Imagine FX, if you don't know, is mainly a magazine where it talks mainly about digital art. However, they do have books, and this is one of the books that they have. I know they have one for manga, and they have one for sci-fi as well. There's probably a few more. I don't know all of them. But I absolutely adore this book, especially now that I just started doing digital work recently. This has helped me so much. Like, just talking about how to paint hands, you know, how to paint lips realistically, just all sorts of stuff to get highly rendered digital pieces that look absolutely beautiful. And they even talk about like character creation and layout, composition. My personal favorite part of this book is scenes of stories. I love to tell stories and to tell stories within art it's just, ugh, it's to die for. Like, look, mmm, mmm. Lots of good artists in this book as well. There's so many artists that I have just looked up and gone to them on, like, Twitter or face on their Facebook, stuff like that, and I just look at their art all the time for inspiration. Because it's so good. So good. Imagine FX. Fantasy Workshop. I highly recommend this one. This one's probably one of my favorites. Now it's time for some new books I got. This one has been saving my life the past few days. Figure Drawing Studio by Butch Krager. I don't know if that's actually how you pronounce it. This does have, it has like the nude figure and how to draw the figure, which is very useful for me since I'm bad at proportions. It talks about how to draw things dynamically. More feet and hands. Feet and hands. My bunny is very concerned about me right now. Don't give me that look. Paper. Bun bun. In the back of this book, it came with a CD. I haven't used it yet, but it has on it 64 photographic model poses with 20 few views rotated from every angle. So it's basically a bunch of reference photos that you can use and like rotate them and that sounds so good. It sounds so good. Last but certainly not least, make its way into my favorite book, my favorite art book spot is Drawing Basics and Video Game Art by Chris Solerski. And 
Again, I apologize if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but I found this at Barnes & Noble on a whim. I was going and looking for this book right here. I was looking for like a figure drawing book to help with proportions and drawing the figure. And I found this and I was like, yes, thank you. Like I said, I really want to do video game art when I'm out of college. So this book was the best thing ever. And another one thing I really like about it is it takes like old drawings, like classical Renaissance era, even like pre-Renaissance stuff. And it shows you how to draw stuff using those and then relates it back to video games. And I'm like, thank you for pointing out how art history can help us learn stuff. This book has screenshots from video games. This book has color wheels. Even more screenshots from video games. Oh, and what's this in the back? Game job placement agencies? It gives you tips on how to beef up your portfolio if you wanna do video game art. Essential elements for your job search. Thank you. <laughs> I need this so much. And it's the best. I, I haven't read it all the way yet. I read snippets of it. I've like flipped through it tons. I just got it though, so I'm excited to read it in its completion. And I am in fact going to read it, not just look at the pictures like I do a lot for my art books. I'm going to read it. And I'm so excited about it. So yeah, that was art books that I have, my collection of them. It's not that much. Other people probably have way more, but I'm still I'm still building it up. I'm building up my collection. I really want to get more reference material books, like my my figure drawing one here. I would like to get ones like with clothing options. I would like to get ones with plants and animals. Just reference images would be really, really great. Also, before I go, I have a few things I'd like to talk about. I am making a webcomic. It is not out yet, but I started writing the script for it. I have the characters designed, and I am so, 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 so excited to do, be doing this. I needed a personal project to work on, especially with summer coming up for me. I knew I was gonna go crazy if I didn't have something to work on, and then I got this idea for a story. I have tons of ideas for stories, but this one I was like, this would make a great webcomic. So I'm making it. When it comes out, I will definitely let you guys know, and I'll probably do a speed paint or something of my characters. I'm so excited. I'll give you a hint, it involves ghosts and lesbians. So what more could you possibly need from a webcomic? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked my collection of art books. I hope that you look into getting some of them because they are very, very useful. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.